Good morning and happy Sabbath. You know, that's meaning more to more and more people around the world. As more and more people receive the light and the grace that God has given us, that God has given to the world, and that God has given to the world, even through this local church. The Lord's making this, uh, this humble, local little Oklahoma church a uh, light under the world, as uh, people all around the world of many different countries, many different faith backgrounds and traditions, tune in to see what message God has through this humble little speck on the globe. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, let it be your light that shines. Let it be your glory that's here. That there'd be a light of the knowledge of the glory of God in this place. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so we heard recently about what the Lord did in Turkey right after the right after the bad earthquake. This is a map of Turkey. And you can see where the Mediterranean has a, a bay there, right in like the middle of the screen. That is Old Testament Antioch. You can see it. It's written right there. Antioch. And right there is the place we flew into both times. Adana. So we'd actually fly over uh, the sea from Adana over to Antakya both times. And what's just to the left there beside Adana? Tarsus. Does anybody know anyone from Tarsus? Paul. <laughs> Paul of Tarsus. And so we have a, a recent event. This is the earthquake affected region. Where does it cover? It covers Antioch on the southern edge, almost all the way to Tarsus. There were two earthquakes, one in the high six, one in the high seven. There are 10 large cities in that red zone. In your humble little church, um, we'll hear about one of those today. We had to wonder, what would God do, and how would God bring further healing and restoration and hope to Turkey? Because God had done so much on the first response. God had worked so many wonders. But yet, it was evident that there was still much to do and things were left undone. If you haven't seen their first response, you can check that out online, on the YouTube channel. And <clears throat> right away, we knew that we would be needing more than human wisdom to make this work. And so once we flew into Istanbul, direct from Dallas, uh, we then got a flight. We bought some flights to Adana. And still couldn't fly into Hatay, where we went last time, in the affected region. And so this young man right here uh, had an inspired idea. You know, you know what the key is for omnipotence? It is divine power combined with human effort. That's what the spirit of prophecy says, a human effort. So human effort led him to go uh, to a part of the airport <laughs> uh, you don't normally get to go to, and that's where the Turkish Coast Guard is. And they had been friendly to us last time, and so we asked them, hey, would you, uh, would you fly us? to Hatay, and they said, well, yes. <laughs> At first they, uh, they asked, well, who are you and what are you doing here? But then they said, well, yes. <laughs> and so here we have, uh, we'll see if the sound works on these videos. This will be our test piece. So we had a, 
when we came into the Adana airport, the government asked us there, are you guys a rescue team or are you a medical team? And we said, we're both. <laughs> so we were officially registered as a rescue and medical team there with uh, the Turkish government and their form of FEMA, which is called AFAD. And so they said, okay, this white helicopter gets the medical team. And so uh, our, our nursing staff went there, which we have one of those here in our audience today. Thank you, Elena, for moving forward in faith. Amen. On the way there, uh, what do you see there on the ground? The silver, that's all greenhouses. The Turkish are very diligent in their agricultural endeavors. And I believe that's one reason why uh, we didn't go hungry the entire time. <laughs> because they were very uh, diligent to grow food and we were very diligent to eat it. And that worked out really well. <laughs> There's the, the Mediterranean Sea. This is the same sea that Paul of Tarsus after he saw the light of the glory of God and got knocked off his horse, would then later be sailing by. God is very good. We went and uh, there was a man named Tahir. And Tahir, even though he had 70, 70 people die in his large family, he took the time to make us his honored guests. And he drove us around for a day searching for missions of search and rescue purpose to do. And we didn't find anyone to rescue. But he, came, he brought us back to his house and he treated us like kings and queens. And here we are. And uh, this is the breakfast uh, that he's made for us. You see, there's uh, fresh fruit and veggies there. God cares about us. And he cares about the... Uh, Cares about the people in Turkey. And because we weren't able to find someone there, we sent, some, uh, we sent a delegation of our team to the, uh, the local field hospital. And the local field hospital said, who are you and why are you here? You don't have permission to be here. You guys need to leave. You're not registered. You're unofficial, which was actually not true. We were official. We were registered with the government, but we said, okay, thank you very much. And so we weren't quite sure what to do next. We knew the last time the Lord had brought us to uh, Anya's house, his apartment complex where his family had been. And so we wanted to go there. And we didn't want to be a burden on Tahir's family. Um, he had many things going on and to take care of in his life. And it had been really a blessing to meet up with him and to share, share stories and fellowship. But it was time to move on. And we didn't know where to go. So we walked down to the Afad camp. And we weren't quite sure what the reception would be like. Things were very different. This time around, the city of Hatay was a, a different world in the five days since we had left and come back. And so we just asked them, would we have a, a place to stay here? We don't even need a tent, just maybe a piece of ground where we could exist. <laughs> And they said, oh no, we will have tents for you. So here they are showing us to our tents. And the Lord is so good. Because this is the next thing that happened. We can have sound on this one too, I hope. So I think I put one down and then I can cover the two. Yeah. So uh, those were... But the one... It's kind good, of... Everyone. <laughs> Bunch of... Brand new clean blankets. <laughs> yeah, you want to see them? Yeah. Right here. Woohoo! Yeah. Fresh, fresh, fresh. <laughs> Not even asked for, just like offered, offered. Ta da! <laughs> so we traveled pretty light. If you take everything with you, you can't really get right on helicopters too good. So we didn't come with bedding. And they were very, uh, really wanting to make themselves good hosts. So they gave us. 14 brand new blankets. There were seven people in our team, so that was two blankets per person. It was pretty cold at night, so we were praising and thanking God for this. And why do I bring that up? Well, because, you know, in, in order to, to go tell people about who God is and what He's done, you can't take everything with you. You just can't. 
And so the Lord has to prepare the way. He has to set everything up. So the next day we were able to go to Anya's house. And perhaps you remembered it was a standing structure last time you saw it. And this is what it looks like when we saw it next. Not the buildings in the background, but what you see currently in front. And this is what it is. And there is an excavator moving rubble around. And that's all that there was. And Anya contacted me and asked, what does it look like now? And I had to send him this picture and video. And you have to think, is there a place for light into darkness when the world looks like this, when your home looks like this? And people ask, why? Why the earthquakes and why the destruction? Why the darkness in this world? And the simple painful answer is my friend once has told me, it says, you know, truth oftentimes hurts. Truth has a burden of pain, but it's still truth. And the truth is, the reason that there's earthquakes like this is because as a people, as a world, we've chosen to rebel against our Creator God. We've chosen our own way, and the earthquakes are the result of it. I don't mean to say that the people who live in the earthquake zone were the sinners that caused it. What I mean to say is, for about 6,000 years, we've been in rebellion, this planet, against our, our Lord and Creator. And it's downright sinful to blame our mess of sin on the God who created us. When we do something wrong, we cannot blame someone else. And so we said, Lord, what is the will of God in this? How can you have us help? What could just such a small team do? And, uh, you know, we don't speak Turkish. And we don't speak Arabic either. Uh, there's a lot of Arabic there because there's a lot of Syrians there. And Syrians speak Arabic. And so we asked, Lord, please bless us with the right connections and bless him to sp speak English. <laughs> We're so, we're so at the mercy of the Lord. We're so in, our, in over our heads on this. And wouldn't you know that uh, there's a Turkish Airlines representative in the Afad camp. They were the people running the Afad camp, actually. And the people running the Afad camp, I asked them, so how does this work? And they said, well, you know, it's just us here. And I was like, so the, is the government like telling you what to do? No, no, it's just... Uh, you know, we volunteered, we're here, and I happen to be wearing the Afad vest, but uh, yeah, it looks like I'm really in charge of this camp, but uh, it's just us, just us local volunteers. We're happy to host you, and uh, <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't believe it. So I was like, the government is not telling you what to, no, no. They're like, this is just whoever wanted to come and help. And they, we got some Afad vests, and we're working with, with them, but so they're just letting us do it however we want. I said, okay. So they're the ones that connected us with this local, uh, well, the Turkish team. And the Turkish team here in this picture is full of uh, relatively young people, and they speak Turkish and Arabic and perfect English. Now, it's really important that they speak Arabic, too, because we're close to the border with Syria, and there's a little bit of not appreciation in some of the population of, of Turkey for all the Syrians coming in because of the war just, I don't know, about 20 miles east of this picture is Aleppo. Aleppo is the most dangerous city in the world right now. It's uh, incredibly war-torn and it was hit with an earthquake on top of that. And so a lot of the Syrians have been coming for a long time now to to Turkey, where there's relative peace. And unfortunately, a lot of the refugees from Syria are now living in tents like this. From, I had to think it was a lot like out of the frying pan and into the fire. Out of Syria or places like Aleppo to Turkey, where it seemed like things were going to be good. And then the earthquake came. And you just have to have you just have to be thinking about the mercy that God would have displayed to a people like that. So we praise the Lord that God blessed us with a special ministry, actually, to 
people from Syria because now we can speak with them. Hello, my name is Jonathan. I'm 21 years old and I'm from Turkey. Now we are in Hatay, Antakya, with my uh, American friends. Thank you all again. Uh, they are helping us too much. They are supporting us too much. Thanks again, again. Uh, unfortunately, people who are suffering from shortages uh, because of the disaster. There are many buildings which are already in ruins. I don't know what to say. It's a terrible situation. Trying to get over it, but it's really hard because it was a really big disaster. Maybe the biggest disaster in this century. I don't know what to say. And would you like to ask something? What do you think of the international response? It was really meaningful, it was really perfect. A lot of countries helped us, supported us, and it was really emotional for me. I want to thank you all guys, thanks for your helping, thanks for your supporting. This young man was clearly moved by the uh, practical help that came from all over the world. It can seem sometimes like you're all alone when there's a disaster. And for people to come from all around the world, he said, was uh, meant a lot to him and to the people there in the affected area. So here we are. We're going with them. They are our local guides. They are our translators. But they didn't have medical staff. But they were running a kind of pharmacy. As in, they were able to bring those in and be able to dispense them, but they didn't have doctors or nurses with them. And so God bless that, you know, he paired it up perfectly where we had the locals and we had the medical uh, capabilities on our team where we were able to go and serve. And so they really felt like it was a, uh, a success and we were really thankful that we could actually be of real service. So here we are in one of those tents and uh, you know it's difficult when you live in a tent where there's not running water there's not set up bathrooms and things like that you don't have a kitchen uh, hygiene is is really challenging and it's hard to stay on top of your medical needs there so it was a real need and we <clears throat> we were able to serve quite a bit and this is what the what it looks like as you're walking kind of in the suburbs of Hatai, which is called Antioch. And we walked around, <laughs> and you know, God provides for you so much that uh, we even found a little store that was open. Even though there was no power, I'm sure there wasn't water, that uh, this local Syrian guy still had his little store open, and uh, we were able to buy some fresh fruit and things to drink uh, in between going and helping people. And I share these aspects of it just so we can understand the fullness of God's care over his sheep of his pasture. He is the good shepherd. So we have uh, some fresh apples there. <laughs> and she was really happy, uh, Andrea there, because, you know, she really wanted a Diet Coke. And that was one of the things that this store had. And so she was... She was particularly happy about that. So each evening, we'd come back from uh, being in the tent shelters and the camps, and uh, we would have really good fellowship with our local uh, Turkish team. And they would bring food from the areas they could find. We'd bring food, and we'd put it all together, and we'd have a meal. And what do you see right there? That, that's like the one thing that they served predominantly, and that's cheese pizzas. Cheese pizzas for breakfast, for lunch, and dinner. <laughs> now, if you walked around the tent camp that we were in, you could also find beans and rice and bread. But if you weren't that adventurous, it was cheese pizzas. 
and sometimes lentil soup. But we did not go hungry at all. Uh, we had every meal taken care of. You know, there's, a, there's still God creates beauty in the midst of all of it. As we're walking from tent shelter to tent shelter, here's a local flower shop having their flowers. And uh, I actually really wanted to buy some, but uh, I didn't have any Turkish lira. But I, I just saw the, the shopkeeper in there and just gave a friendly wave. They gave a friendly wave back. And I was like, hey, you're doing something here to brighten your corner of the world. Thank you with your flowers. This is one of the 10 cities. There's a lot of people. Nearly every one of those buildings is made of cement. Nearly every one of those is uh, uninhabitable at best. Oftentimes it's the simple things in life that connect. Here Chandler is, uh, <laughs> is teaching the local youth uh, all about photography. Chandler is our, our professional team photographer, and uh, we have uh, our local Turkish team being the model <laughs> for the portrait. <coughs> and in the evenings, we would, uh, we would worship and sing songs together, and this local young man that went with us uh, he wrote songs, and he'd play them on his guitar for us. And we had just a, a real valuable time where we could share uh, some of the Old Testament prophets, and they could share uh, about their teachings as well. And God just blessed us with a very uh, sharing type of mutual respect attitude uh, where we can genuinely say, yes, we really are friends. In fact, uh, the man by the fire there, last time we were blessed with uh, people who knew a lot about uh, Turkish culture and Islam and how to, how to work with the people. And most of our team was, you know, Americans without a lot of that background. But I thank and praise God that you know, he blessed us with our, our own highly uh, adapt cultural person, again, such that uh, Johan comes from a family who has lots of family history and tradition with lots of uh, Islamic countries, lots of uh, Muslim countries and peoples. So it was just, you know, he was teaching us the whole time how to uh, best be friends with them. We walked <laughs> so far uh, with our packs on foot. Here we're, we're repairing his shoes with duct tape so that we can keep, stay on the road. We stopped and talked at, uh, with some soldiers. And the soldiers in the background here actually pulled several live people out of the buildings too. And this is a... Uh, a kebab. Now, normally they have lots of meat in the kebabs, but this kebab they made special for our team. It's got uh, nothing but goodness and veggies in it, and it was really good. And I just, I got to share with you guys just how good God is and how much God takes care of you. And how was the shower that you just had here? So, first it started off with citrus oranges. Because I know that's we the had thing that you can backpacks have. full of oranges and lemons. Uh, I was like, okay, I, God's I looking out for us today. This is Dylan's second trip. So this is Again, his return. And a full meal this time. I, and it's like, I had my phone okay, thank you so God, I, crazy I, I God. And then someone, they, they come up and they're like, do you want a shower? And I was they like, oh, yes. I called someone yes. else and they I'm like, that was great. And as we're walking like this, Long trek back to the shower house. I'm like thinking, you know what? God's giving me a shower. It's gonna be hot. That day, the entire walk, I was like, it's gonna be hot. 
I go in and I open up the thing, turn on the water, and it's super hot. I had a hot shower after five days. With olive oil soap. So the tent camps didn't have showers, so you know, he goes way out and uh, in this little tiny village where they're doing their remote medical clinics and they invite him to you know, this area where they, get, they give him the shower. And I especially like the place where I was like, none of us had any hot showers like the whole time we were in Turkey, except for Dylan. And, and if you, I don't know if you caught it, as he's walking, he's like, if God's giving me a shower, it's going to be a hot shower. So, you know, I had to ask myself, when I think about it, would I have expected a cold shower? I, pro I probably would have. So I, I appreciate the perspective of faith. People saw us doing medical stuff, and they're like, oh, well, they must be, uh, they must be giving supplies out, too. So next thing we know, we turn around and someone dropped off a whole truckload of supplies for us to give out too. So now we have a mobile point of distribution operating as well. So now we're giving out shoes and backpacks and blankets and toothbrushes. And you know we didn't see that coming, but the Lord made that happen too. And we had so much that um, we actually went back with these supplies and gave them out at other places. But here, sometimes it's the simple things. What are the, the youth doing right there? This is, uh, we gave supplies away in the cardboard box. And what was it that they appreciated? Oh. The cardboard box. <laughs> there's three, three little boys running around in there with that uh, as, their, as their, their game. And these are all the supplies. Oh. Maybe. There we go. These are all the supplies. Uh, God blessed us with a van that day to be able to carry the supplies back uh, to their local pharmacy where we gave a lot of those out too. There we are. And this is right next to our camp. So the Lord just made this so convenient. And I think from the very first night, our local Turkish team were like, yeah, we, can, can we stay next to your guys' tent? <laughs> said, yeah, come on over. So the Lord really set it up to where we had just the best fellowship. After several days of doing medical, um, it was time for us to do another mission. And they've kind of worked really hard at this point. So this is like a whole group uh, relax and restoration breakfast that we're having here. And we asked the Lord, would you send us to the gravesite of Anyer's family? Because it was Anyer's family that had been in that building. And <clears throat> so that's what we started working towards. But before we could do that, they said, oh, no, no, we, we have a special meal that we want you guys to come to. So they invited us to this special meal, and it was, it was beyond good. It's so good. Uh, and they had at a local dairy farm, but they milked cows just for us, apparently. I was really glad that nobody handed me a glass of, of milk. God is, is good that way, too. <laughs> but they, had, they presented me, they said, oh, we have a medical need, could you, could you please come help? And I said, okay. And we didn't have our medical like nurses that were so trained and experienced with us this particular time. I was like, oh no, what am I gonna be able to do? So they bring me into this room, and there's this woman in probably her 90s. And they say, well, ever since the earthquake, she's kind of been sickly and unable to walk or unable to get out of bed. And I was like, oh man, what am I going to do for this, right? I said, like, what does this woman need? What would be the most helpful? And I was like, you know, I think that if she were to receive the loving care and attention of her family, that that would probably be the most helpful thing for her. And Turkish is famous for Turkish baths, right? So they already know about hydrotherapy over there, so I could already tell them, hey, if you just do 
hot and cold towels alternating for her, that that's going to do a lot for her. So that's not just going to be the hydrotherapy, but that's the loving care and attention that her family is going to be able to show her too. And prescribed to drink water, right? And prescribed that she should actually eat and get proper nutrition. And at the end of the consultation, I said, I'd really like to see you walk. And I meant, you know, gradually work up to after family cares for her for a while, but she understood through translation, she wanted me to see her walk right then. <laughs> and so she starts getting up out of her bed, and I was like, oh, what, what's going on? They're like, so, well, you said you wanted to see her walk. <laughs> so the old, she gets up, and she has one of us on each side, and she starts walking. And she walks out of her tent, and she, we get a chair for her, place her in the sunshine. She walks over to the sunshine, takes a, a break in a chair for a bit. And I was like, oh my, like the Lord just made this old woman be able to walk again. And, you know, I had to reach down, or, you know, kneel down and give her a hug. And she was just so thankful. She gives me kisses on the cheek and stuff. And was saying just all kinds of like thankful things, whatever they were, if I could remember them. But it's just like, man, sometimes the things that people need, we think it's, it's so much above us, but would the Lord answer our prayer to be able to help someone? So uh, that's her right there in the white, the white uh, kind of bonnet thing. And this is our team member here who translated for us. And I, I've, I've heard they've actually stayed in touch with the family. They said she is still walking and getting better still rapidly. So, and I have to say, like, the Lord worked a miracle. I had no idea what to do for her, but he gave the wisdom. This is, um, this picture is the gravesite of Anya's family. Anya's family is the people that we were trying to dig out of the building on the first trip. I believe we got within about 15 inches of them, best as I can understand and tell. And that really seemed to us like we needed to come back and, and revisit Anya and his family. You know, the Lord, when he sends the disciples out on their first mission trip, what does he tell them to do specifically? Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons, and raise the dead. So we actually were wondering, Lord, would you, would you do this? And I had to read all about all the various stories in the Bible where people are risen from the dead. You know, in the story about when Lazarus is raised from the dead, the last thing that it says in that passage is, and many people believed. You know, the purpose of Jesus raising Lazarus was so that people would know who he was. People would know that in this world of sin and rebellion against God, God had sent a light into the darkness. And we read about the, the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. And the rich man asks Abraham, Abraham, would you send Lazarus to my brothers so that they would repent. And what does Abraham tell him? He says, they have Moses and the prophets. If they believe them not, they will not believe even though one be raised from the, from the dead. But I don't know if this country has Moses and the prophets. I don't know if they have the scriptures. And so I had to think, perhaps the Lord would be, would be merciful. And so he said, Lord, if, you, if that's what you want, if that's your design, bless us to be able to find this site. And so we, uh, we spent two days uh, trying to find this grave. And it was on the border with Syria, and there was an earthquake what, like immediately after they had uh, conducted the service of placing them in the earth. And it was at night. And Anya did not know where it was. And so we went to all the local uh, 
cemeteries that we could, and they had a list of everyone, and they, they couldn't help us. They, they did not know where it was. And so it, sometimes the Lord says no. Or the Lord, in this case, I like to think of it as the Lord says wait, because there will be a resurrection day. There will be a time and a place where the Lord does bring his home. This is one of the places that we searched. But I, had, I also have to think, <clears throat> what would it mean to honor, to know that the team from America came back largely to pay their respects and to seek the Lord's will for his family? I believe Anya is one who is willing to study the prophets and who is willing to place his faith in the prophets and in their writings about the Messiah who comes. He's already told us that he, he believes what the prophets say about Isis, which is how they say Jesus over there. A local Turkish team <clears throat> was so... Hospital to, hospitable to us that uh, they even blessed us with haircuts. So here's Chandler getting a haircut and uh, they were looking after Chandler to make sure he was able to get what he needs there. And we came back to our tent camp that light and there was one more medical request. I'm not sure why she didn't have a cast on but there seems to what we heard is that her leg was broken and that she had a medical procedure involving this incision, but there wasn't a cast. And the bandage hadn't been changed in quite a while. So changing a bandage may be simple, but it's very important. So we did have the blessing of the medical supplies to be able to change the bandage for them and to give them probably about two weeks supply at least. Uh, where the family could change that themselves with the topical antibiotics and the oral antibiotics necessary so that this didn't be any worse than it was and so that healing could happen. This was one of our last nights there. As we, <clears throat> as we came back to our tent camp on the last night, we noticed every tent was gone and just the blankets that had been in it were on the ground. Uh, I guess they had decided to move everyone out of that city because the city was uninhabitable and they wanted to move everyone to essentially a better place. And I had to think, what would it take for us to understand the blessing that it is to have a country life and be out of cities ourselves? Because the reality is, is if we know the Bible and, and, the, and the prophecies in it, that the cities are not the place for us. The cities are a place for a ministry. They're a place to conduct uh, our missions of, of helping people. They're not a place for us to be long term. So here we are. We went to the airport. We've done all that we possibly could to find Anya's family's gravesite. We had finished our medical um, mobile clinics. <clears throat> and we were not able to book flights. <clears throat> They would fly people out of Hatai for free, but you couldn't book a flight and you couldn't really make any reservations. You just had to show up at the airport and see what happened. <laughs> so that's what we did. We showed up and uh, they said, okay, well, you'll be in the queue. It'll probably take a long time. Probably by tomorrow afternoon, you guys will be able to get a flight. So, we said, okay, great. And then about five minutes later, they came back and they said, there have been eight people that uh, didn't show up. And you guys are a team of eight. Would you like to get on this flight? And we said, we're very torn because we kept thinking perhaps the Lord had more for us to do for the people and for Anya. But we also do follow the Lord's leading. It seemed like we had looked under every stone and been as thorough as we possibly could. So we got on the plane and we went to Istanbul where our local Turkish team members 
took the joy of treating their American friends and uh, to, to some R&R &R in their city. And it, although it seemed like maybe this wasn't an important part, this was the time where we could have uh, some crucial conversations about, you know, what have asked me, you know, if, if God was able to send the prophets through so many, or send his messages through so many prophets, why was there a need for Jesus to come? What is the need for him? And so we had to talk about, ever since our world chose darkness, God needed to send a way for us because we couldn't save ourselves by our own works. We did not have the light of God within us. We had to have a savior from the outside. The, all the good works that we could ever do would not earn us a way. Because God's law is perfect and holy and as just as God is. And if we break it, only God can make that just. Only God can create justice there. And it's a blend of justice and mercy where the law and justice requires death. But Jesus, by being God's sacrifice, is able to accomplish the mercy aspect as well, which is not present in Muslim religion. It's not, it's not in there. As in, there's forgiveness, but there's not a there's not a fulfillment of divine justice. But we had a, a, the blessing of being able to go, and she actually, uh, this is one of our, our Turkish friends here that was on the team, she actually gives presentations at her mosque. So she gave us this presentation. It was really nicely done, and it really helped us understand uh, their teachings and their perspectives. And this is all about um, their religion with how it works with mosques and schools um, is really nice. And when, when we would go to the shops, you know, we didn't try to advertise to the people that we were uh, a rescue team, but our, our friends would, would tell them, trying to be good friends for us so that we could get the best prices, right? And we said, well, don't do that. We can just, you know, pay the fair prices. Uh, but they would, they would tell, still tell them. And when the shopkeepers would find out, uh, every time they would say, oh no, I have a special gift for you. We didn't buy anything at this shopkeeper's store uh, and we never acted like it, but he's like, oh no, I have a special gift for you. He gave us all these special little bowls. So we have, uh, Jess has her flowers there in it. And at one place, at one shop, I was even like, well, don't, uh, they were saying, we need to go somewhere else to get better prices. But I said, oh, I want to check this place out. And he found out we were a rescue team. He insisted on giving us food and for free and then the dried fruit. But even though our, our, tur our Turkish friends were like, don't try to go to this shop. The prices are too high. But then they gave it to us. And they were like, well, I guess now we feel like maybe people are better than we thought. <laughs> even our Turkish team said. So they're taking us here to this uh, really fancy, you know, dessert place. Uh, Turkish desserts are really awesome. They're totally different. If you haven't had them, um, you should try them out. <laughs> they're very different. A lot of pistachio nut based and like fruit kind of gum jelly stuff. It's, yeah. it's pretty great. And I have to think, you know, what what is the... What is the biblical precedent for Antioch? Well, if we look in the book of Acts, it starts out with uh, Tarsus, and Barnabas goes to Tarsus to get Saul and bring him to Antioch. So in Acts 9, you have the early life of Paul involving coming from Tarsus. He gets knocked off his horse, and then he gets brought to Antioch. By the time you get to Acts chapter 11, you have a lot of activity concerning Antioch. You can see all these lines. And Antioch is the place where where the Christian church first started their very first outside of Jerusalem, outside of Judea uh, place where they were going to start raising up believers. 
and so what does that make, make sense for us then to do? Just as Paul, this is what he shared. This is uh, from Desire of Ages. It says, God is light, and in the words, I am the light of the world, Christ declared his oneness with God and his relation to the whole human family. It was he who at the beginning had caused, quote, the light to shine out of darkness in 2 Corinthians 4, 6. He is the light of sun and moon and star. He was the spiritual light that in symbol and type prophesy, or prof, symbol and type and prophecy had shown upon Israel. But not to Je Jewish nation alone was the light given. As the sunbeams penetrate to the remotest corners of the earth, so does the light of the sun of righteousness shine upon every soul. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that comes into the world, as John chapter 1 states. And so now, what's next? Well, if you take a look at this, this is where, this is where it went from beyond Antioch in Paul's day. As in, it went from just Antioch, you see, all over uh, Greece and Italy and Asia. And so it is today. The mission is the same. All of these people need the blessing of the light of the glory of God. Every one of them. So what do we need? Well, we need seven more dogs to start with. Seven more that could find people alive. Just last night, we have a connection uh, established with the Turkish military. This is their thermal imaging device. This is a picture in Anya's home. These are the people that we were looking for. This is on the screen on their thermal imaging device. We now have a connection where we can get the device and the training is what it looks like. I want to read in closing 2 Corinthians 4, 6, and 7. This was a, a watchword among us. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. As we close, we have another special hymn just on this theme. Closing song uh, today is hymn number 457. I love to tell the story of 457. Please stand for our closing hymn today.
worship you in the light, in the light that you've given us, that though we were lost in sin, unable to save ourselves, you sent a Savior to satisfy the needs and claims of justice and to be a demonstration of God's loving mercy, that we may be cleansed and forgiven and sanctified, all by your wonderful power, because you sent the prophet Jesus to be our prophet and priest and king. And we thank you. Amen. Amen. 